This video is partnered by Mint Mobile. Hey guys, before we dive into the video, there's something special I want to share with you. Like many of you, I've been trying to cut back on expenses lately, but let's be real. It's tough when you got things to do and you don't want to give them up. But sometimes you have to make those sacrifices to pay your phone bill and satisfy the big tech companies. That was until I discovered Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless services starting as low as $15 a month. With Mint Mobile, you can get high-speed data plus unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. The best part? You get to keep your phone and even the phone number. Now, if you do want to purchase your own phone, they do have phones available on the website, which you can get through the link. The internet service is reliably fast. It's so seamless, I put it up there with any other network on the market. Now, some of you might think switching to a new service is a hassle. Let me reassure you, this is only gonna take you 15 minutes to set up. You could literally do it right Right now from your phone, no need to leave your house or contact anybody. And if your device does not support eSIM, then Mint Mobile will personally ship you a physical SIM card. So if you're like me and you want to save a little bit of money without sacrificing anything, use the link trymintmobile.com slash just Alex and start your wireless plan today as low as 15 bucks a month. Don't lose out on this opportunity. Start saving money by switching to Mint Mobile today. Login complete. Welcome to Alex's world. <laughs> the lines have been drawn! Paul Heyman refused to acknowledge Solo Sokoa! As the tribal chief, that means, ladies and gentlemen, the Bloodline Civil War is coming to a head, and we are here. Hello, everybody. It is your boy, Just Alex, right here. And Alex is one of the safe space for wrestling fans like you. SmackDown tonight was spectacular. Awesome ending. Great start. Cody, Kevin, Randy, whipping some Bloodline ass, getting tossed out. That's okay. Because it led to what I thought was one of the best endings all year. Give credit where credit is due. Paul Heyman is the MVP of this Bloodline storyline arc. Featuring this new savage, very bloodthirsty version, no pun intended, of the Bloodline. Featuring Jacob Fatu. Of course, the gorillas. Ain't nobody realer than gorilla. Tama and Tonga. And of course... The leader himself, the fake tribal chief, Solo Sokoa. Loved every single second of that ending. Let me tell you guys something. You can sit here all day and tell me that you were sick of Roman Reigns as the world champ. I know we've been here before. WWE has tried multiple times to get Roman Reigns over as a top babyface, and every single time it has failed. It got to a point where even I said, bruh, just stay as a heel. Let people at least find you entertaining as a villain. Because you're not going to wear a guy as a face. I gave up on it. Somehow, some way, a miracle has happened. Where they have come up with a storyline that has gotten me to the point where I am begging Roman Reigns to come back and take his spot. When Roman Reigns returns with Paul Heyman by his side, maybe a little bit of that Uso magic as well, Jimmy and maybe even Jay, that won't go so easily. I have a feeling that reunion isn't going to be, let's just say, brotherly loving at first. But when that happens, the fans are going to lose their minds, and I am here for it. They got me to a point where, yes, I am ready to accept Roman Reigns as a top babyface. More than ever now. Let's go. And hopefully this leads to what will easily be one of the best stories they have. Civil War of the Bloodline, and then Roman eventually taking on The Rock at WrestleMania 41. Hey, I was cool with The Rock as a face and Roman as a heel. They flipped it. Now it's Roman as the face and Rock as the heel. I'll take whatever you give me. Let's take it to the next level, baby. I'm excited. 
I'm excited to get to whatever the storyline has in store for us. But before we get to anything involving The Rock and Roman, let's give credit where credit is due. Solo is killing it. He's killing it as the top heel right now, at least for SmackDown. This Bloodline story arc, I didn't think it was going to be this good. When they took out Heyman and Madison Square Garden, 17,000 plus, were viciously booing them out of the arena. I'll tell you what. That's how you know he did a good job. I only wish they would have kept Solo undefeated. That's my only, only knock on this situation. Even if he had to lose one or two matches, I wish he would have won more matches than he's lost. Ever since he beat John Cena, all he's done is lose and lose and lose and lose. And that killed some of his momentum. Not all of it, but some of it. I'm happy that he's able to get a quarter of it back. And he still feels like a legit threat for right now. I just wonder how much of a threat he would have felt like if they hadn't given him that losing streak. Because he went on a lot of losses after he beat John Cena. What is it about beating John Cena that just makes people less interesting? Even Austin Theory. Regardless of how you feel about this, I, I can't wait for Roman to come back. Man, this is going to be one of the best things they've done in a long time. Here I am, the same guy that despised Roman Reigns in 2015 when he won that Royal Rumble. Almost 10 years later, I'm gushing over this guy. I'm waiting to acknowledge my tribal chief once again. SmackDown was great tonight. I am going to go ahead and review the show. We're going to talk about the major points here. We're going to start things off, of course, with that opening segment. The solo bloodline came out with no Jacob Fatu, by the way. And they were supposed to do the acknowledgement ceremony. But then they were interrupted by Cody, Randy, and, of course, Kevin. They attacked them. They have a match next Saturday. Big brawl. Hot start. And then, of course, security ends up coming out and throwing out Cody, Randy, and of course, Kevin, because we can't let this happen before Money in the Bank next week. That's the last time we see them, at least for tonight. But that was a hot start. And by the way, didn't talk about this first, which I should have. They sold out Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden tonight was sold out. 17,000 plus, not a seat empty. I think this is the largest gate they've had for SmackDown Ever? Right? Ever? You'll have to do the research on that. It's one of their largest gates, but it might be the largest gate. It's like 18,000 people in that building, man. That's a lot of people. Tiffany Stratton wins her triple threat match, beating Candice LeRae and Jay Cargill to punch her ticket to Money in the Bank. As of right now, Tiffany Stratton is my... My pick to win Mrs. Money in the Bank. Is it tippy time for you? Because it is for me. I don't see her cashing it in immediately. She's going to hold that briefcase for at least a year. Most likely until WrestleMania. I think Tiffany Stratton, if she keeps her nose clean and doesn't do anything stupid or say anything stupid to get her canceled on social media or period. Yeah, multi-time. Multi-time women's champion. She's got the athletic ability. Personality-wise... Needs a little work on it. But she can always improve on that. Not worried about her in that department. WWE is going to push her to the moon. And I'm here for it. I think she's a great talent. This is an issue I've been noticing when it comes to WWE being on Fox in particular. Is anyone besides me getting very annoyed with the overbearing censorship on Fox? And I'm talking about blackouts during the show, them muting the crowd when they're chanting. I get that, but them blacking out the screen, they did that multiple times today. I hated that. Hated it. October, September, whenever they're moving off of Fox, it can't come soon enough. Can we move off of Fox next week? Because I'm sick of this. I'm sick of it, man. They did a, a thing with some NBA players 
I don't know their names. I think it's Tyrese, Jalen, uh, Jalen Bronson, and Tyrese uh, Holly Burton. Holly Burton? Holly Burton? I don't know. One of them's from the Dallas Mavericks. The other one is from the Pacers. Apparently, the Pacers are hated here in MSG. I don't watch basketball. I'm not really into that, but the crowd was into it. So it was a big moment for them. I'm all about appealing to the mainstream, not hating on this whatsoever. What I do love, though, is everybody say his name with me, L.A. Knight, yeah, Penn Slogan Paul, to punch his ticket to Money in the Bank. Love it. I'm pretty sure Logan will screw him somehow. But the men's Money in the Bank side is pretty stacked. I'm sure Drew will win on Monday, and the match will be awesome next Saturday. Toronto is going to be a great crowd about it. I think Naomi ends up winning her Mrs. Money in the Bank match. And then, of course, we get the the main event. I'm skipping over a lot here because I do have to be somewhere in a second, but look here. That ending, when Paul Heyman held those beads, the tribal chief beads, and Solo held his arm out, telling Paul Heyman to acknowledge him. Tama acknowledged him. Tonga acknowledged him. Fatu, Jacob Fatu, acknowledged him. But the crowd was screaming, no, 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 no. Don't acknowledge him, Paul. And Paul, looking scruffled, tears in his eyes, gray beard, mentally he's drained. But when he saw those beads and Solo told him to acknowledge him, Paul finally snapped. Paul looked at Solo and said, I acknowledge that you are not my tribal chief. Massive pop. Huge pop in MSG. And then Paul gets attacked. Instantly that pop turned to booze and that beatdown was vicious. I love that top rope headbutt that Jacob did. Amazing. And then, of course, they put him to the table, shield style. And we ended the show with Solo getting a ton of heat. That's how you tell a story. Again, I love that he has a ton of heat right now. I just hate that we could have given him a lot more heat if they had kept him undefeated. It is what it is. I'm not going to lose my mind over it. They did what they had to do. But we're still at a very strong boiling point with this storyline. You already know, when Paul comes back, he's bringing Roman with him, and when Roman, when Daddy Roman walks back in that building, whatever building it is, the roof is coming off. We're finally gonna accept Roman Reigns as a babyface. This is the perfect storyline to do it. And then it's off to the races, to Roman versus The Rock. At WrestleMania 41. Perfect. No complaints whatsoever. What did y'all think? How'd y'all feel about this awesome show? Great show, by the way. Awesome crowd. Everything was well built to Money in the Bank, including the six man tag Cody, Kevin, Orton, Bloodline. That ending is one of the best things they've done all year. Y'all let me know. I loved it. But thank you guys for watching. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Kept it short and sweet. Just wanted to come up here, give you guys my quick thoughts about it. But I look forward to hearing what you have to say. As always, as you follow out, do all the YouTube things. Like the video, subscribe, and click that bell to catch all my content when it comes out. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and donate using PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, and Venmo. Love you all. Catch you guys next time right here in Alex's world. The place it is, was, and forever will be a safe space for wrestling fans like you. Peace. Oh, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're,